Hey everyone, welcome to the cabin. My name is Alec Brits and today we're checking out the DPA recording kit, Deluxe Edition. Thanks to the people from DPA as well as to Studio Care for hooking up this insane review kit. Now this is not the usual review where I have one product and just go really deep into it, but the good news is you'll get to hear how each of them sounds. If you enjoy what you watch here, please consider subscribing. If you would like to support the channel in any way, then please consider giving me a super thanks. That will allow me to keep doing this more regularly. Welcome everyone to the DPA recording kit. On the top layer over here, everything starts with our 4099s, and they're split up into two different categories. The first category is the high velocity ones, and at the bottom of each of the microphones, there's these little yellow dots. Then over here, as you can see, there's the ones with little red pieces at the bottom. They're for more sensitive instruments like strings. Some interesting details about the 4049 is the fact that, as you can see over here, it is shock mounted on these beautiful little elastic pieces. DPA has got a really intricate and beautiful way of mounting things. So as you can see over here, the microphone clip just slides in to the microphone itself and then there's this piece over here which is a beautiful metal piece and that slides in simply on top and that ensures that the microphone is nice and stable it's not going anywhere at all. Now what I like about the system is that they've carried it across every one of the clips that ship with the 4099s. There are so many different clip options and as we've just gone through the drum one I thought I'd touch on one or two extra ones over here. This is the standard 4099 clip to go onto your microphone stand. The bottom is made out of metal, so you know it's going to last a long time, and the same mounting mechanism happens here. So that clipping mechanism goes across all of these different clips. We have some for strings, we have some for horns, then we have all-purpose clips that just kind of literally clip on, which is fantastic. The connection that is used on the 4099s is called the micro dot system, as we can see over here. This system allows for a really wide variety of use cases. So if you wanted to connect a 4099, let's say, to a violinist, to a wireless a stereo pack, then all you have to do is to find the right adapter to fit onto that stereo pack. The 4099s are powered by this little preamp over here. There's two different kinds. This is the 4099 DAD with a low cut. Further down in the case, there's some other options that are flat. And you just supply 12 to 48 volts and you're good to go. The amount of headroom on these microphones is insane. If we look at the preamplifiers over here, and they just screw into one another really nice and easily. However, when this is mounted on something like trumpets or on strings, you might not want to have an XLR connection just hanging out the back of a trumpet. Inside of this case, there's about 10 of these extensions, and the extension is is just a really nice thin cable that is really discreet and makes miking up really nice and easy and also to ensure that not too much weight is hanging on the backs of these small connections. What I really like is that on everything that is designed to connect to an instrument, it's very gentle and pliable so that it will not harm your instrument in any way. So let's start with the big boys, shall we? We have two 4015s. These are wide cardioid pencil condensers. Then we have two 4011s. These are fantastic cardioid pencil microphones and super wide application. I've used them on everything from vocals, acoustic guitars, piano. Then we have two 4006s, piano, room sounds, anything that you require, a nice flat source. All of these microphones have a minus 20 dB pad that is located on the inside of the XLR barrel. One of my favorite things about the DPA microphone systems is the fact that the microphone preamplifier section and the capsule are interchangeable with one another. So here we have a 4011 head with an MMPA system. MMPA is their most high fidelity version. Then over here we have a 2011 capsule and an MMPC system. So now this allows me to take the MMPA and pop the 2011 capsule onto it over here like this nice and easily. And then I can do the same thing again here with the 4011 capsule and pop this onto the MMPC. So this allows you to have a very discreet footprint while still capturing the beautiful sound of the 4011 then we have something very special over here. These are the 4041s. This is DPA's only large diaphragm microphone. Compare it to something like the 4011, and you very quickly see how much bigger this diaphragm is. There is this coherence between the DPA microphones, specifically these six, where the upper mid-range doesn't get in the way, and it's really gentle, so when you use them on more intrusive instruments, they don't feel harsh. The 4041s have a different tonality to them, and they have quite a bit of presence that kind of builds up from around 5k all the way to about eight and my goodness me do they sing beautifully above drums again on piano and acoustic guitars like nothing else i've ever come across down here we have four 2011s these are cardioid microphones really fast transient response fantastic on snare drum and on guitar amplifiers the headroom is unbelievable on these guys you can see them on the lewis capaldi tour then down here we have a pair of 4018s these are super cardioid microphones
headphones and you can see all the cabling that goes with them. So you can place these very discreetly using some of the DPA clips over here. You can put them inside of a piano and close the lid without having any issues at all. What I really like about some of these clips that come with these little 4018s is they're so tiny, they don't get in the way. Then as we see over here, we have the same connections that we saw before without the XLR piece at the bottom. And for the 4018s, this will allow you to use them with any of the clips that are shipped with that first layer we spoke about earlier. Over here, we have all of the clips for the 40 series microphones. Again, this is made out of metal. And as you can see over here, there is a little marking. So when you're using this with a stereo bar, it shows you very easily how to line up the microphone Phones to get all of your different stereo miking techniques very, very easily done. Welcome to the final layer of the kit. So over here we have our two vocal microphones. The top one is the 4018V de facto microphone. This microphone allows you to be able to interchange your capsules. Underneath that we have the 2028 vocal microphone. You cannot change the capsules in this one, which makes the price slightly more approachable. We then have an extra set of XLR preamplifiers. Again, they take 48 volt phantom power. These don't have the low cut, so if you need a bit more bottom end out of your 4099s, these guys have got you covered. Then we have some foam pop shields over here. These guys will be able to stop any plosives or any kind of wind coming into the microphones. These guys are for the de facto mics. Then we have four normal pop shields for the 40 series microphones down here. And then we have some more clips for the 40 series microphones. They just slide right in here. You twist them slightly and then that hugs the microphone in place. We then have the same rubbery shock mount system from before. But now this is for the 40 series microphones and this holds them really nicely in place. So the next clip is this guy, and I pulled it out of the bag and popped it on my desk and it stayed in place and I realized this is a really strong magnet. So as you can see over here, I used it on the piano holding the 4006s in place. And then once I finished using it, I thought to myself, well, it would be great if I could just take off this piece because then I'd be able to, oh my gosh, this fits onto microphone stands as well, which then means that this bass can be used with any of the 40 series microphones. <laughs> Usually there's not much to talk about with the stereo bar, but this is so beautifully labeled again made out of metal every one of these screws is made out of metal which is awesome to get the appropriate measurement that you would like you simply slide it to where you want it to be and lock it in place very nice and easily it feels very sturdy so that is the tour done of these microphones now you get to hear how they sound i hope you enjoy and i'll see you at the end with my thoughts So, the DPA recording kit. When the DPA representative came to drop off these microphones, shout out to JP, absolute legend. I've never felt the presence of having something in here so much. I guess like the closest would have been when I did the pool techs. DPAs are extremely well known for things in broadcast or classic recording, but in contemporary music studios, at least in the UK, they're not as well known. That to me is baffling, because anytime I've ever come across them, I'm always flabbergasted by how even the tone of the microphones are. As you heard earlier, they can capture capture pretty much anything really easily, but I'd like to draw attention to some of the specific applications that I love the DPAs on. 
Using condensers on close mics and drum kits is something that I enjoy doing until I hit a cymbal. You see, the sound of the rejection of a microphone is really important to me, so when I had all these 4099s, I was really excited to hear them, but I thought, it's gonna be great while I'm hitting whatever is being mic'd up, but as soon as I'm chugging away on hi-hats or playing the cymbals, it's gonna get a bit rowdy. I was pleasantly surprised by how firstly clean the rejection was, but how unintimidating the close mics were. The overall sound of all of the close mics working together, well that was quite special to be completely honest with you. When it comes to things like recording pianos, I had a hunch that the DPAs were gonna sound good because this is kind of their comfort zone, right? So I tried the 4006s as you heard earlier, and I tried the 4011s as you heard on my Neve 88M video. It was as if I was just sat at the piano playing. Man, I've been through a lot of mics to try and get to this sound. There are two things that I would like to talk about as the ultimate highlights for me in this pack. The first is the 4041. These things are more rare than unicorn feces, and I wish I hadn't heard them because I know now what Omni mics I'm actually aiming for in my life. 30 centimeters apart from each other, pointing directly at the source. What comes back at you is this perfect representation of what you are hearing in the room. I had an incredible engineer in here last week. His name was Tony Draper, and he suggested we try them as drum overheads, and the result floored us both. The other thing I'd love to highlight is not necessarily one thing in the pack, but it's the ethos that kind of covers the whole DPA lineup that I was trying out. Every little detail has been thought about with these microphones. From the way that they stand on the clip to the fact that everything that connects to a microphone stand is made out of metal so it'll last forever, but anything that touches an instrument is soft and delicate. The ethos of having a very even frequency response between the 4098s, the 4011, the 4006s, you kind of bring up the faders and everything just sounds even and non-intrusive. So that's the insanity that is the recording studio kit. I wish I could go into every single microphone that they had in this kit, but we'd be here for about 45 years. If there's any microphones that you saw within the kit that you would like me to review, then just drop a comment down below. Thank you so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've watched here, please consider subscribing. To those of you who have subscribed, thank you so very much for doing so. I don't understand what's happened in the last 10 days, but there were 500 of you that decided to subscribe to this channel. That's just awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. If you'd like to support the channel in any way, then please consider dropping a super thanks. That will allow me to be able to upload more consistently. Most importantly, I hope that you're all looking after yourselves and you're being kind. I'll see you in the next one. Hang on a minute. What are you doing here? You're a few weeks early.